as I get you guys rigged up. Just give me a minute. I'm going to put you guys on the chest harness, but I need a second here. I want you to study and look at this awesomeness I have in front of you. So here's what we're doing. We're going to take all of these that you see before you and we're testing it. Now, this is something I just would normally do on a day to where I get off work. Unfortunately, we got a uh, limited time to this weekend's daylight savings. But fortunately for me, Saturday and Sunday look like they're going to be in the 60s so I can go fishing. But before I do that, I want to see what I've accomplished here. Whoa, 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 you guys are sliding. So here's what I've done so far, and I'll talk more about it. I'm going to switch around. We've got the lingual rigged up back on the uh, Ace Hawk CU double because we're going to test out. Whoa, get, oh my goodness. Hang on, this line, I hate two pound test. Have I told you guys that? Two pound test line is like, I don't know what it's like, but I'll show you what I've done. Before I put you on the chest harness, it's hard to work with that chest harness other than just casting. So can you guys see in there? You see that? No, I didn't get a uh, ceramic bearings from AliExpress. Not that quick. Uh, uh Here's what I did. Being the genius that I am, I just started looking around on all my reels that I own. And in the process of changing, I was trying to check spools. I wanted to see which spools, you know, would interchange. Well, guess what? This spool will not interchange with the Black Knight. It just won't do it. They claim the GH100, uh, the real test, is the same spool. So that's a plus. But for the Black Knight users, it's uh, a no-go on spool switching. But guess what? Spool bearings are the same size between the Lingle and the Black Knight. I already switched them. It, it's a deal. It works. So I took the Black Knight spool bearings because I know that spool is horrible for this. The Black Knight, the original Black Knight. I, I'm talking about the one, the original, not the Black Knight 2. There's no way that huge honking uh, spool that comes with can cast this trout magnet. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to cast it on the CU double, see if I can get to where I was before. If you guys remember, I don't even remember, to be honest. I'll have to look back at the video. I can guesstimate. I think I was at the, close to that first crack before you hit the street crack. So we're going to cast, test that. Then we're also going to, I wanted to compare the Toma to the uh, Ace Hawk. These are both uh, six foot rods, but actually the Toma if you put them where the trigger is, the Toma is actually a little bit longer where it can on the end. So I want to see if it can cast as well as the whatchamacallit. Where are you going? Okay, well can then you pull out of the way, park in the street or something, or is he coming, or what's going on? Your kid's coming right now means in five or ten minutes. Anyway, where was I? So I'm going to test this, and we'll see how well the Toma works compared. Because they're roughly the same price. This is like 38 31 and two tips, ultralight, light tip. I actually got them both and plan on using them with the uh, light tip, not the ultralight. And so while I'm testing this one out, I have another Toma rod that is the exact same, like, blank. I, I would swear they're the, exactly the same. I'm sure they're built off the same blank. But I have a uh, six foot six. So in today's test, we're going to jump out here and we're going to test these spool bearings. But then we're going to switch to this rod compared to the CU double. And then we're going to test and see, you know, which can cast... I guess how much further can a six foot six cast compared to a six foot? So hopefully we can find those two things out. I'm guesstimating that uh, there, it's not really that much longer, but sometimes that little bit. And we're also going to throw all three baits. That's why I do have a snap on the uh, rigged up. And I did reweigh these. This still weighs like four grams. 
and that weighs 1.3 or I didn't get it to 1.5 but everything was casting it pretty good actually I get I'm pretty good at casting these now because this thing feels like a good solid uh, I guess I would say my casting has gotten to the uh, my ability where I've normally cast a 16 ounce crappie jig or even two grams the 1.5 seems that easy now after I've got lighter spools, but then just messing around with that trout magnet has made it. And this thing feels like a tank. Like you put that on any of the, any of the rods that are ultralight. And even though that's an eighth ounce crappie jig with the, just a typical thing I fish for crappie and like four, just under four grams, 3.9, we'll call it four grams. That thing feels like a load. You can cast it a long ways. So anyway, let's get on the chesty and let's get things going here. Give me a minute. Hope I don't shut the camera off while I'm thinking of it I've also got a few issues I guess I'll go ahead and talk about now I was I don't know if any of you guys, for those of you that are following, this isn't really anything to do with this test. But you guys kind of want to know what my thoughts are, right, on these rods and reels and all that, even though just watching the performance or whatever. I found an issue with this reel other than the line kind of starting to catch, and you'll probably see here shortly that it does a little bit. Uh, mine started to make a few little creaks and noises, and I think it's all because of this. When I had this apart, this is kind of like a cap that just pops on. And I believe underneath this is just a bare frame. And that's how I got, they got this color to match the side plates. It's just a chunk of plastic coated, painted. I don't know however they did that. It's an awesome silver looking color in person. It looks real good, almost like a, it's not like a chrome, but I don't know. It just looks good. Problem is, that is a thin little cap thing that pops on there. And I think I'm hearing that creaking every once in a while. And it doesn't do it all the time. I probably won't be able to get it to do it for you. But sometimes when you, I don't know, I just, in jacking around, I've noticed it can make a creaking noise every once in a while. So I just thought I'd let you guys know that. So at some point, this may become an issue with some of you guys. Yeah, I just heard it there. This may actually even fall off some of your guys' reels. I have no clue, you know, if it will or not. It's just one of those things that once I've seen how it's like, it's got real little tiny ears, like it just pops on basically. So, I mean, I've already planned if I pop, the trick is not letting it pop off where you still know where it's at and not losing it. Cause I plan on, if mine pops off, I'm just gonna glue it on. I'm not gonna worry about it. You don't have to have it off. It goes across the frame. There's no reason to serve, to take it off for any reason. It's just a cosmetic thing that the way they design this reel. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you guys know that. I've got, and what gave me the idea, I started looking around on uh, AliExpress and I definitely have, they're already on the way, I've ordered some bearings. I have, what do I have coming? I have a set that would fit either this or, you know, this size bearings and I don't remember the size off the top of my head right now. But then I've also got, uh, oh, I've got a set for the, the, the clamber the Spirit Fox and PW100 are all the same bearings, and I've got a, two sets coming up. I'm probably not going to mess with the Spirit Fox. That spool is kind of beyond, I think that for me anyway, even worrying about sprucing up that reel as far as performance, it'll be good for heavier baits, but I'm not going to worry about it for lightweight baits. But I do have, I could only find in this size, the size that these reels take, I want to say three, three by 10 by four, does that sound right? Yeah, they're all four. They're all, they're 10 millimeters around. They're all four millimeters wide, but the threes, these are the fives. Three by four by five or something. So the circle in here is bigger and the other ones are 10 by four by three. They got the smaller on the this side. So I had to get two different, from two different places. The red ones had a set that would fit this the purple ones from aliexpress if you guys know what i'm talking about they had i had to order them luckily i need i got two sets that were like 16 dollars a pair 
but the same bearing and then I needed two other bearings but like if you were trying to buy one pair of bearings for your clamber or your PW100 they're going to be ten dollars each but luckily I was able to get them at 16 something because I needed two of this and two of that and it sell them like that so and then the other one was I think right around the same price and it, it'll fit this so anyway let's get to this test now I haven't messed with that because you guys remember how hard that is to adjust anyway so I haven't messed with that I guess let's walk down and show you where we're going. I know all my videos. I try to just come out here and do a quick thing, but then everything takes forever. Now, right out here, which is a long way, I, I rewatched the real test and his little shootout between the uh, Black Knight 2 and the Air TW, and he was guesstimating like 40, 45 feet. Well, we were, we're right in that range right out here somewhere. So I was guessing 40 to 42 with almost all my reels. A couple of them were falling short back here. But it's like 48 feet to right in here somewhere. And I think we were getting, I got here, I got right here, if you guys can make out, with the uh, with my Shimano, the Alder Baron stock. And then I got a couple feet out into the road, which is I'm almost positive 50 feet with the uh, Black Knight 2 on the CU Double, two pound test. But then all the others were falling short. Like I think only one or two made it past this crack. So that's a. Uh, I don't know, six to eight foot difference. So anyway, we're going to see changing bearings, what this does. And we'll get a good idea of where it's at. And then we're going to go to the uh, other rod, just so you guys can see what, a, if you're wanting a cheaper Toma. I mean, this is cheap enough. I recommend getting this rod myself. So, oh boy, hang on. Here we go. Backlash. Of course, I always backlash takes a minute to get used to the good news was I didn't hear anything up in the Did I get I got it out good enough well it made it a ways out there though uh oh hang on if you guys can see that I gotta pull all this freaking line back out and hopefully it don't knot up on me I had a uh, there's a little I didn't have all the line pulled out. Hear that? That noise you're hearing is somewhere it's wanting to... It's in between... Oh, right there. Let me get that all the way out. Oh my goodness. I just... Can I tell you this? If you're out fishing with two pound tests and trout magnets, nothing's ever easy. Why not just put on some braid and this is not a knot up on me? Oh my freaking God. You do not, I'm just telling you guys right now, I know and I got man hands, my hands are dirty. I don't have those uh, QVC prepped hands like the real test. I just got off work. And that was just a joke. Sometimes my hands are actually clean. Right before I'm going to grab something real nasty, then they don't stay clean for long. See this knot? I can see it, but I don't see the end. I don't see, I don't see how to recover from it. You know why? Because it's a freaking two pound test. Well, this may be a short lived uh, live deal. Oh my god, it came out. It may have weakened it, but we don't care. We're not fishing with this line. Whew. Braid will do that every time. You just pull on it and it comes right out. This is this trout magnet testing and this two pound test is starting to get on my nerves. Let's try this again. I gotta watch this thing when I think that was just because it landed before I stopped it. Okay. It's kind of iffy. Spool bearings. If anything, it tells me I need to adjust the brakes actually up. So just in case, now we almost hit that crack, that first one, but I'm going to go up just uh, 
just one notch. Turn the brakes up one little notch. Yeah. From what I remember, we're not gaining any distance. I had to turn the brakes up to get it to not backlash. Let me see where that... Okay, let me get one more and I'm going to walk you down there and show you where it's landed. And I think... One more. Okay, there. All right, let me walk you down and show you. Now, we almost had a backlash, but I threw it harder. I may need to come up one more in the brakes, but I managed to get it. Oh, I always do that. If you guys can watch it when it moves. It was at the crack, but my line always catches back there in the grass. I got like an awesome driveway. We just rent. I ain't messing with the driveway. But uh, so we hit right here. It was right there. And it did that the first time before it had a little incident. So I think I've gained a foot or so, but I don't think I gained a lot. And bearings are close to 20 bucks. And if unless you're using, you're wanting to use a trout magnet, I really don't know if I can justify spending all that money. Because I spent uh, $16 on each reel. Six, 18 18 whatever I can't remember what the total was so let me try one more it's hitting there consistently though but I, I'm gonna go up one more in the brakes because I'm gonna I'm gonna try to really zing it I don't want it to backlash because I'm kind of I'm throwing it I don't know I'm casting like my normal like when you go out and cast you shouldn't have to cast as hard as you can every time you cast. So you just want to have a normal cast, right? Just like if you're out casting normal, you don't cast as hard as you can. I don't anyway. You guys go out and fish all day casting as hard as you can every cast. I just, I don't know, make a cast. Okay, so even going up one, oh, I got some. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hear that drag? Oh, it's a big one. What the heck did I catch? Is there a leaf out here this heavy? Come on now, caught a crack. That's the first time that's happened in all the testing I've done. Okay, so we're almost to that crack every cast, even adjusting the brakes up. I don't like to go that. There would be where I'd normally, like I want a little bit of distance. Good, good throw, nothing too hard. And we're about a foot away from that first crack. Now remember, I know, I said it before in the other video. I do have a 0.5 gram heavier spool than the lean goal is supposed to come with. So we're, I mean, that's a, you definitely, I could go out and fish with this right now. I could fish with the trout magnet with the lean goal, even with my heavier spool. There's no doubt that, you know, little bitty small creeks and whatever, I can go out and fish. But it is not getting, the furthest I was able to manage was to the crack. And I have to look back on my other footage how far I got with it. But I want to say it was not quite there. So it's probably gained a foot or so. I'm going to go back with the brakes now. I'm going to go turn them down just a notch. Okay, I like that cast. Where did it land? Yeah, right at the crack. So that's what we're going to call it. I can tell that I'm like right on the verge of that spool. So bear with me. Now we simply, oh wait, no, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now I'm going to skip the 1.5 or should I throw it? I'm going to throw it one time. Oh my God. I just, I'm anxious to throw the big weight and see if I can get it all the way across the street and to the neighbor's yard like I did with the regular bearings. Because I love them other, the stock bearings, I had no problems with. I just wanted to see what these, uh, since they fit. So let's see how far this guy go. You guys hear those? Now we hit the crack by the street first cast. I'm not going to adjust the brakes either. I'm just going to cast it like that. We hit almost a foot into the street. 
and you can definitely hear them. You can't hardly, them spool bearings don't really get fired up with the uh, ceramic bearings. That trout magnet doesn't really fire them up. Now there, I'm gonna show you because I don't know if the lingo was hitting. Can you guys remember? I don't remember if the lingo hit a couple feet out into the street with this thing. But so if you're one to throw, see that bait moving? Let me see. Right there's the bait. So you got, yeah, about two and a half feet past this crack. So over 50 feet with the 1.5 with the lingo. Now, the uh, Black Knight 2 will throw the trout magnet that far. It's about as far as the Black Knight 2 was getting. So, I'm gonna do, just so we'll hear how loud these freaking bearings, these, I don't think these are the greatest spool bearings ever made that came with the original Black Knight. I said it before in mine from the day, this one that I bought from Jay, it, it's the bearings out of that reel. It's kind of the same thing. Those things seem very loud. And I know they're ceramic, but here we go. We're gonna try, we should go all the way. I guess I never did walk you guys over there, did I? Nope, we hit the other side of the street. Now my hands are starting to get cold, but we're not done yet. We done. Where'd it go? Oh, hit the sidewalk, went a little to the right. There's no wind, that's why I wanted to get out here. I don't know if you guys can see the leaves. There is like no wind blowing. I need to hit the other side. Okay, there we barely hit. And that's the thing, this bait, if you guys remember right, stock bearings, I zinged that thing and it went flying like, I wanna say real quick, it went right over there, no problem. So I'm gonna cast one, hopefully no cars come while I'm doing it. I'll take you guys, just so you can see that I wasn't lying. And I don't know, I need to measure this. Right out here, like I said, is 50 some feet. I got a leaf reel on. But, so I don't know how much further it is over here, but right over, hang on. Oh, there's the bait. I think I pulled it a little bit. So anyway, they were landing right out over in here into the neighbor's yard. So, here comes the car. They probably think I'm nuts out here with the fishing rod in my hand. They might be right. But anyway, I don't know if I like that. You get all the extra noise, you gain like a foot or so on the trout magnet, but you don't, it doesn't, it did not, definitely did not help it throw that. Four grams. If anything, I, it's almost like it hindered it. So anyway, we're gonna go back to the trout magnet and I'm gonna switch rods real quick, so bear with me. I'll try to find something else to talk about while I'm doing this. Here, I'm gonna move you guys real quick. Whoa, hang, hang on. I keep doing that, and you know what? You guys are just gonna stay right here. So anyway, we've got that cut. Uh-oh, what? What was that? Oh boy, I just did a no-no. You guys see what I did? Reeled that all the way through. We gotta hurry up and get done. Okay, we're gonna go right to this guy. I'm just gonna make a few cats. We're just gonna. Get an idea if this is as good. Oh yeah, I did fix the. If you guys didn't catch that, that is a longer. Handle, so when I grip now. Got a little more meat there. Doesn't feel like the rods falling out of my hand. Hang on, let me get this lined up. I tie a knot. 
There's one good thing about this rod when you're in a hurry to line it. There's only so many eyes. And they're not that little. Well, right here at the tip. I should have cut that off. I got a little bitty kink right at the end. And the last few eyes are hard to get in. Oh boy. Let me cut that. Hang on. Uh-oh, look out. Okay, trout magnet, where are you guys at? These, I'm telling you guys, it's like messing with all this little stuff. My old eyes, I have a hard time dealing with that now. I guess I don't need this snap for this. We're just going to leave it on. We Well, yeah, we do because we cast the... The other rod had it. It doesn't really add up to any weight. On my scale, I can't get a reading on it. I was trying to... Oh, my goodness. So out in the freezing weather, cold hands, you can still tie... They're not wet, thank goodness, but they are freaking cold. That's why I tie that knot. Because I can see it. It's easy enough to do. You can tell instantly when you tie it that, hey, I got it tied right. I just hooked myself right in the finger with that thing when I cut it. All right. Now we're on to this rod, which actually I plan on using, or I have used, and I plan on using this reel with the lot now I did put the it's got the ultralight tip it comes with both and I did put the ultralight tip I plan on using it with the light tip and another day if anybody wants me to do that I may I may actually I could try the CU double and this one with the uh, the light tips on and see what they do whoa didn't stop it soon enough oh my god well we're testing this and I really I, I think I commented in the other video this reel, I would not have an issue with fishing with two pound line because I've yet to have to pop the side off. And with the Black Knight 2, ha I've had to uh, once, maybe twice. Not as often as you think for as easy as the two pound will go in there, like when you're testing it. But this line, I've yet to have it. Uh, where's that at? It's almost to the crack. It'll. Uh, It'll make you think, you'll hear it like clicking or whatever, but it's never like where you got to take the side plate off and fix it. Okay, so I don't think there's a difference. I'm almost to the crack. I'm going to make a, let me get a good cast here and I'll try to show you guys. Well, I hit the crack and I had another, every time I have a little backlash, so I tried to put my finger on it the last minute. That way it'll uh, get down there good. Because we're losing light and it's hard to judge it where it's at. We don't need no leaves on there. All right, one more cast and I'll walk you guys down there. Then we're going to do the other one. Hang on. Running out of time and light. All right, I'm going to show you that. See that? No backlash. We got to turn the rod around so I don't pull the line. So where did you go? Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Look way out here. You guys see it right there? See it moving? Right there. That is two and a half feet past the crack. I think I was only getting to the crack, right, with the CU double? So if anything, I'll try to get you guys a good shot of this rod. This rod right here. Actually, uh, 
is probably better. It's a, it's almost a little whippier though. Like it's got that. It's starting to get a whippiness because it's got a full on solid uh, graphite tip. The CU double isn't. It's hollow. Somewhat. I don't know how long, but it it is hollow to a certain extent. So with the combination maybe of the upgraded bearings for for very lightweight stuff anyway not that they help for anything else but with that combination of that and this rod i was able to get out there with definitely a real good fishable distance but now we're going to take basically this same uh built blank material anyway but uh and it's only adding, it, it, it claims it's six foot six, but here, let me show you guys real quick before I put it on. Which it is when you measure it. But if you look, we've already got, and I added a little bit to this one. When you match them up to the trigger where it counts, where you're casting, and I'll try to hold it. And you get down to the end of the tip. Hang on, that ain't right. Let me, let me figure out how to get it held without it moving. So right there. So when you get down to the end, oh my God, hang on. I'm gonna get this. When you get down to the end way out here, can you guys see that? You're only gaining like maybe three inches. It's not six. So, which one? Okay. But we're going to find out if that little bit. And I'm finding out this freaking rot, reel right here, this reel goes with everything. That's one thing it has over the, uh, for the all the rods I've already owned or have been buying, the lingle just goes with them all. Like you put it on, like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. The Black Knight too, I guess just how bright, you know, how purpley it is. It's hard to find anything that looks as good on. I like the reel overall looking better than this thing, but when you're trying to match it up, mm -mm, game over. This reel, hands down, just looks way better on almost everything I have other than that crazy pink one. Anything with, you know, a lot of purple on it or I guess brighter colors, but any of your metal, black and metal colored, more traditional style, this lingo just goes way better with. All right, hang on. I might get this lingo to go, or this combo to touch where some of those others were with the CU double. And it also kind of goes to show you that it all does make a difference. Once you get to these light baits that I never throw, your rod, reel, bearings, how much line you put, what size, all of it does come into play. So if you're wanting to really and truly fish these light, you're not micro fishing, but you're fishing, you're definitely using micro baits then yeah. All right, let's get this done and out of here. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay. Man, it's like dead quiet out here. You guys know, there's usually a guy over here with the, on, the, on the weekends it's a nightmare out here. Everybody and their brothers out here doing stuff. Well, I stopped that. I could. I lost track. All right, here we go. Okay, we hit just a hair past the crack, but I, I once again I stopped it because I lost it. I think I stopped a little too soon. Where'd it go? I can't even see it. Oh my goodness. I don't think we hit the crack. 
think I'm, I think I need to let go sooner. Okay, we went, here, I'll go show you guys real quick. But I'm not totally done, I have just a few casts. So we passed the crack up. We actually landed already, we're already where, you see right here, we're already to where we were getting with the six foot rod. So I'd have to say that yes, the so six foot, just adding a little length. Of course, if you're in small areas, you know, this rod may not, you know, a shorter rod may be better, even a, even a little bitty rod. But when you're doing like we're doing, we've basically got all the room, not really all the room in the world, but I can rear back and cast. I don't have to worry about fitting it in anywhere and I'm casting this longer rod works. But if you're limited to, it doesn't really work any better, I would say. Whoa. Yeah, it hit there again. I would say though that for some reason I'm not I'm not backlashing. I haven't changed anything other than I switched to this rod. And I'm consistently getting about a foot or so past the crack and no issues. So hmm. Yep. Same thing out there a couple of feet, so I don't know if you guys can make that out though. I feel this rod, let me try to show you that. The CU double, try to get the spot. It's definitely, I don't know, once you get to six foot six, they just feel, they're not really noodly rods, but they feel, they start to feel that way. They get tip heavy and they feel like they got you know just too much for me anyway but they're not bad and there's the i mean it's basically the same tip but once you add it out there a little bit longer it just feels like more i don't know i don't know how to explain it but for me I like this rod. They do feel almost the same. This one definitely feels a little more tip heavy and a little more noodly. But I wouldn't call them noodles. And this one is this one's close. And then if anything, that's why I was wondering, you know, I think this one's even a little stiffer, which I like that, but as far as for casting lighter baits, I think you're actually better with that more noodly, just you know, just a touch lighter feel. So anyway. Ooh, my hands are frozen. Let me see if I got any comments. I didn't have time. I haven't read any yet. What? As you cast the two trout magnets with the three-way swivel. Hmm? I don't know what you're trying to tell me, but... Oh, you're telling me, I, yeah, I'm not trying to rig it to fish. I'm, we're just seeing if it'll cast a single bait, whether it be a trout magnet or whatever. It's all about, we're not like, I'll tell you guys right now what Charles does. He's like, oh yeah, I fish track trout magnet. I'm like, oh yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I can cast trout magnet. Charles takes the trout magnet and then however far up, just like you would crappy fishing, he's got this little bobber thing that he hooks to it and whoo, all these little bait casting BFS reels, even the old school ones that are still heavier and whatever, cast a trout magnet. No problem when you got a bobber on. Just like a crappie jig. If you guys ever use crappie jigs, I use like those egg-shaped ones. You get a lot more distance than throwing a regular crappie jig with the bobber on it. But anyway, this was about this test and whoa, whoa, look out. I think they're all what do you guys think of my new rod? Do you guys I got that just a little bit of extra so when you're grabbing it 
if you remember right, that other one, it ended right at the palm, of my, like in my palm, and it just felt horrible to me. This feels way better. Looks better. I'm thinking about uh, this. I haven't even cleaned that. I don't know when the last time I cleaned that old one off the uh, tattoo. I just got it cut down and glued on and went, okay. I think I'm going to add the U40 cork, cork sealer on all these ones that have the foam. They're like EVA with the cork co coating just to, first of all, see what it looks like, and then maybe it'll help it last. Yeah, you're talking about like fishing. Yeah, that's the way... And I guess you could do the same thing with trout magnets, even in the trout stream or whatever. Like back in the day, now we didn't use swivels, but my grandpa had a way. He We tied crappie, like a, sometimes it would just be hooks with uh, split shots too. But, you know, he's talking about just fishing a bait here and then have another bait tied up above it. And whether you, for like jig, a lot of guys jig that way, but you can actually use that too to cast out and then reel in. So you're going to have one. Say you're wanting to bounce off bottom with one. So you could actually have a heavier bait on this one and then up here tie a trout magnet on and then just be coming through at a pace or two trout magnets. Then you, you know, you could cast that easily. And then once you get into water and stuff, a lot of times the two different weights, you know, the same weight, it can still get the same speed. For me anyway, I don't know how trout are. I'm not big on trout fishing, but crappie like to have sometimes speed and depth if you find what depth they're at you can run a bait through there but sometimes on a certain say if you're too heavy you're coming th through that zone too fast so you're like nope they don't want it then if you go you know something like this big then say if you lighten up to a 16th ounce which that's not what this is you can throw a 16th ounce get it down close to that depth and you can come through holding that depth at a slower speed or if you're within range or like a slip bobber, you can just throw a bobber and try to just vary your speeds coming through there until you find what they want. Then other times I've said, I've been in a boat before where literally the side of the boat, we're just dropping the bait in, like holding it down, doink, pulling them up, putting them in the cooler, doink, crappie fishing. Like when the bite is on with crappie, I don't know about, I don't think trout are probably quite like that, but it doesn't matter. You can just catch them. Anyway, guys, we're not talking about crappie fishing. This bass and bonsai, we bass fish with crappie lures, right? No. Trout lures, no. Bass lures, yes. Just like this little, oh, dude, he's a one-eyed willy. This guy has taken more abuse than any other lure I've ever had. <laughs> Even the little two-gram crappie jigs, because I have to switch them out every so often. And I was throwing them in the grass. Sometimes they hit the street. This guy has hit the street repeatedly for all kinds of tests. And that's one of the knockoff ones, you know, it's not the bean or whatever, but I have to say, it's like still holding together. I could put a, I could put a hook on that sucker and fish it. That could be a challenge. Who wants me to put a hook on this and go fish it somewhere and catch a fish? I may do that, even if you guys don't want me to. All right, guys, hope you like this video. So far, I'm definitely liking uh, the CU Double. I, I like this rod. I actually love this rod. Real test, he was right about that. This rod, he don't know anything about this rod and how I did this, but i tell you what, I like this rod. And I talked about in the video, I think this is real uh, wood. This is not real, but it feels real good now. And at some point, I could also just get another, you know, redo it in an actual cork if I decided to keep the rod, put new eyes on it, or who knows, I may order another one and do it up the right way after I wear this one out, if they're still selling them for 30 bucks. 30, 31 dollars, good looking, working overall, slight tip heavy, didn't quite get the guides right. It could use a few more, but it doesn't really interfere with your fishing. You know, this, for instance, I was getting the same distance as the CU Double, it's got the eyes perfectly on there they you know look way better they're smaller i got this uh and i'll try to show you in comparison you know sometimes we get overboard on how cool you know it needs to have the eyes and all that don't get me wrong i would love if this rod had eyes like this rod does but it doesn't so yeah it actually has if you guys can see that they're both six foot but this rod has as much length as the six foot six has on this rod this rod has on the cu double and i think that's why it got a little bit more just those few little inches make a difference 
That's what she said. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I'm cold. I got to get ready. I got to get all this stuff rigged. I took the line off everything. I was getting ready for winter. I was getting ready to come out videos, going through my tackle box. I haven't sorted out yet, but that's another thing I'll be upcoming on what I do in the winter to kill time and to make sure I'm ready for next year. But I got to get ready for Saturday and then possibly Sunday. And I can't feel my fingers. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned. A lot more coming up. Thanks for you guys that are watching and commenting on all the videos when I do a live video. I hope these come out all right. Sometimes they're, the clarity is horrible. Other times it's perfect. But And stay tuned. I'm going to be putting out individual videos on each rod and reel at some point. And I'm still up in the air on whether I like this or the Black Knight 2 better. Or if I like any of them better than the Clamber. Or if I like the Clamber better than the PW100. So stay tuned to that. My final thoughts. I'm gonna, I was going to do it this coming weekend, but I'm actually going to go out and fish them again. So then I'm going to go and I'll, you guys will get my final thoughts on maybe which ones I'm getting. Because the 11th is a sale coming up. These are only like 72 bucks. Uh, the, and I may get a dark wolf. Man, that thing just looks like all the life's been sucked out of it, and it's solid black. It looked like they took a Black Knight 2 and sucked all the life out of it, and it's just this black reel. But it supposedly has a lighter spool. So I may get one of those, another Black Knight 2, another one of these. But I may also not get this. I may not get this or the Black Knight 2, because the Black Knight 2's got a little bit of spool tolerances. This has a... Uh, the spool weight top deal that they i when i talked to guys said a lot of them are 7.4 well they're supposed to be 7.3 so i may wait i've already got one of each i may get the sonora uh dark yeah dark wolf and then just kind of wait wait it out until at least halfway through the winter you got to order about two months ahead of time now if you want something but and then order then not worry about the few dollars you're saving for the 11 11 sale but i may just go ahead and get them now i don't know and also, if you're watching this video and you know, comment the best deal on a, I'm also debating about getting a Calcutta, Calcutta Conquest BFS. I've had the older ones. I had both gold ones of the 50s, the 50 and then the 50S, which was the shallow spool one. I love both those reels. I had some monoblocks also, the actual, uh, like Mega Bass the, from Daiwa. And I kind of gave up the round reel thing. I don't know if you guys can look back. I, I posted it somewhere. I had old pics where I, I actually made my own rods so I could use the old school uh, aluminum reel seats that let you palm real smaller for those round reels. I don't know. I did a lot of different stuff back then. But I'm thinking about getting another one. I've seen uh, Hobie One Kenobi just picked him up one for the first time. I, uh, a few years back, the real test picked one up. I don't think he, that was his first, maybe only round, the actual reel from Shimano or Daiwa. I've kind of been down that road before, but I didn't truly have a true, like, what's out, what the Conquest comes with stock, but you can get aftermarket spools. Oh, yeah, I forgot. That was the most important thing I was going to tell you guys. I did order. I finally, the gold spool came in stock for my uh, Aldebaran. So I ordered that crazy lightweight DIY spool in gold because I was waiting for the gold one. They, the purple's out of stock now, but the purple was the only one available. I didn't want, I got too many reels with purple. So I got a spool coming for Aldebaran because I was impressed with how well it cast that stock heavy spool can cast a one gram trap, trap magnet. So I was like, well, I'll just see how high end you can go with that thing. So anyway, got that spool coming, spool bearings for could be this reel or whatever other reel that so i probably put it in this and put these right back into the uh original black knight but then the clamber and i decided to keep the clamber i was going to sell it but as the tolerances and just the way that and the shootout i had the way that uh, reel works it's worth keeping and just using it's it's a good reel yeah i know the kind and I've, I've already seen all the stuff the uh yeah i'm getting the one with the separate spool uh shaft i don't know if it's so it's still got the one side is still not ported uh over here and but then the spool shaft separates i don't know if that's going to be good work or not they've got another one out that is all fully ported and it comes with extra magnets you actually add and go in and touch or not touch but they work on the inside of the spool i've seen that one it was more money it's like 80 something the one i got is the 58 dollar one is uh i believe yeah 58 dollars so, I mean, if 
I don't need it for all the stuff I use. That Shimon, the Aldebaran has been perfectly fine, but the one gram trout magnet, I didn't think it would cast as far as it did. So I'm like, well, let's just see, push the limit, see how far we can cast with that thing. And yeah, the, I know that none of the, even I, cause I've thought about getting a Corrado also. I've never, like I mentioned in the video, I've never actually held the Corrado 70, the Scorpion, the, the Scorpion DC actually, I believe the older one, not the newest one out is based off that 70 frame. I've never held one of those reels. So I thought about getting either a Scorpion BFS or a, cause I was watching uh, a while back, I commented on, uh, I think it was, yeah, it was Hobie One Kenobi had an awesome looking rod with the Scorpion BF on it. Just looked nice, it looked clean, looked nice. And I was asking him about the rod. And then I thought, you know what? Still never held one of those reels and seen how they feel as far as, I know how they're gonna cast. They're gonna get close to the Shimano Aldebaran, but they're not gonna be there because they've got, they're just not quite there. The, the, the Conquest is very close, you know, cause it, it's very, it's just off a little bit in the weight of the spool, but you're talking a lot heavier with the, the Corrado and the Scorpion. So I know that, but like I said, even throwing this, is about the lightest thing I truthfully go out and fish for crappie with or bass type lures. I have a few that are way this. When I go to little creeks and streams, then I get into the 1.5s. I don't go any lower than 1.5. I'm not gonna go throw a trout magnet unless, I, unless I'm wanting to do like a little, you know, I may put a hook on this guy and take the trout magnet out, my one new one I have left, and just see if I can catch a fish at the next time I go to a creek or stream, which in all honesty will probably be next year because I don't know. I don't want to be cold and even putting on waders and wading through streams in this kind of weather. I like summertime. I actually go out without waders on. I just go out with, in shorts and wade through the water and it helps cool you off. I love creek and stream fishing in 90 to 100 degree weather. That's the best time. It's too hot to be out in a boat during the day, but walking because you're kind of shaded in those small creeks and streams, but you're walking in the water, that's the best time to do it. Yeah, all the is much lighter, but the Corrado feels just as small. Yeah, and that's probably like the Clamber, the, well, and the Black Knight too, and the Clamber, they, they feel small too, but they just don't have that as smooth feel as the Palming Aldebaran. But they're, they're they're right there very close, and they're the pretty much as lightweight. The actually reel that still palms real well, but it palms a touch bigger is the PW100, but it palms better than this reel. PW100 palms better than this reel. This reel does not palm the greatest. It feels okay. I like the thumb button. I like how high it is. It, it's basically, that's what it palms like. The Tatulas and the one of whichever Steez when it was still big. The, the newest Steez is smaller. But the current Tatulas and uh, the older Steez, that's what this palms like. Maybe actually a touch lower because they didn't have to go as high for the T-wing. But it it palms kind of big, but for the few rods I got it intended for, it's not that big of a deal. I, I wish they would actually make it a, if they redo, if there's ever a lingual two, that's what they need to do. They need to make it just a touch, you know, whatever, I don't know. You already copy the Steez, copy the Alphas. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time. Be looking for some other kind of shootout video because if I got a decent day, and then I got fishing videos coming out. What? I, okay, last thing. My fishing videos, I'm going to probably put out in reverse order. So I'm going to go this weekend. Those will be the ones you're going to see me edit and make next, then from last weekend, then the weekend before, and so on. Because the last time, the video that I'd be editing now from to catch up is going to be far outdated uh, anyway so i'm basically i think i'm going to edit my fishing videos in reverse so you'll get the latest ones more than likely but if you haven't watched catch check my latest uh, personal best and all the big bass from last year until uh, now but i'm also going to put together a video of, of the bait the one bait you guys probably already know if you watch the channel if you don't the one bait that is warm up for me for over a year now i got on it I mean, I've thrown it before, but not necessarily the same way I throw it now. So I'm going to go into detail on what it exactly is, how I throw it, and then I'll include a lot of baits on, you know, my 
baits that I feel I throw and I got to you have to kind of work them and use them a certain way before they really work right. If you just kind of throw them the traditional way that uh, people will tell you how to do it or where you think to do it, sometimes it doesn't get the best hits for me anyway, or the most hits and all that kind of stuff. But be looking for that video. All right, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.